great to be in South Carolina, and I feel right at home here. Uh, I, of course, went to college here, so I'm from Arkansas, but I went to college over in Greenville, Bob Jones University, and uh, actually I got my accounting degree there, and I decided I wanted to go to law school, so I was accepted into the University of South Carolina Law School. Good job. <laughs> this is a Clemson ball. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, I went back to Arkansas, and, uh, and a lawyer there said, you better go to law school in Arkansas, so I switched. I went to Fayetteville, I got my degree there, and so I did go to USC. But had I gone to South Carolina Law School, just think, I might be governor of South Carolina. <laughs> so just the, the twist of life. Now I can say that because uh, Henry McMaster and I are very good friends. Uh, he and I were both United States attorneys during the Reagan administration. I emphasized that I was the youngest United States attorney in the nation at the time. Henry doesn't like me reminding him of that fact. Uh, but he's been a friend. I've followed his career, and I've been a great uh, admirer of his uh, leadership here. So I like uh, South Carolina, and I know you've got a competitive race for president. Uh, you, I mean, what state has got two candidates in from the same state that's running? And so you might say, well, why is somebody from Arkansas here campaigning in South Carolina? And first of all, I like South Carolina. And uh, I, I want to make sure my message is a national message and just not exempting anyone. And you don't know what the future holds. As this race goes forward, it is the most unpredictable race in my lifetime. And I do believe that. And so you don't know where we're going to be four months from now, six months from now. And everybody's voice is important. And uh, mine is included in that. And I was asked uh, some great questions. By the way, I love being here. A great uh, restaurant bar. Thank you for your entrepreneurship. And, uh, and I also appreciate the chairman because uh, I have been a chairman, Republican County chairman in Arkansas. And I was state party chairman when Bill Clinton was governor and running for president. And so we were a blue state at one point, And I fought the battle. And others fought the battle, and we became red state. When I got elected governor, uh, it was the first time in history that we had a Republican governor with a Republican legislature. And so we did turn red. And I enjoyed uh, the privilege of being governor of Arkansas during that time, uh, eight years, and I was term limited. Uh, and uh, we lowered taxes, $700 million a year moving from the state coffers in, back into the pockets of individual Arkansans to grow the economy. I had a goal in life, and that is that the private sector of the economy grows faster than the government sector. Is that not fundamental to America? And so that was our goal, to make sure the private sector could build itself. And I actually uh, lowered state employment by 3,000 workers. Uh, while I was governor. 14% reduction in state employment while I was governor. And I'm talking about state employees, government employment. We lowered taxes. I uh, worked hard to build a computer science education program that actually led the nation. We were the first state to mandate, require that computer science be offered in every high school. And uh, Governor McMaster, to his credit, uh, saw what we were doing and he said, I want that in South Carolina. And he worked with the legislature and has done a great job of leading the computer science effort in this state. And I took that and we actually went from 1,100 students taking computer science in Arkansas to over 23,000. And so that's a good for their future. I created a $2 billion surplus that I turned over to my successor. And so we had a very conservative record as governor for eight years. And, uh, for the first time in history, as I left office, I turned the reins over to another Republican, Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders. And so that's the first time we've had back-to-back -back Republican administrations, Arkansas, which is proof that if you're a consistent conservative and you govern well and solve problems, uh, the people respond to that. But now I'm running for president, and people say, well, why are you doing this? Because I care about this great country. And everybody has their American story. Uh, 
Uh, my American story is that I grew up on a farm, a uh, small farm. I learned how to clean out chicken houses and to break the ice for the cattle. Uh, I learned work and responsibility. My mom and dad had a high school education, uh, but they taught us responsibility. Uh, they gave to us, they taught us the importance of faith. And faith has been important in guiding me through my life and really motivating me in public service. And uh, after I returned to Bentonville and practiced law, uh, my fellow lawyer said, you can't be a lawyer and a Republican and have any success. Well, I believed in Ronald Reagan's conservatism. I believed in limited form of government. And I said, I'm going to fight that battle. And we fought and we won. We became the majority party. But going from the farm in Gravit, Arkansas, Spavinoff Creek, uh, to Congress and then to uh, the White House uh, with President Bush, whenever I was called into the Situation Room in the White House and President Bush gets a briefing from the CIA on the latest terrorist threats, this is post 9-11, and uh, President Bush gets the briefing on the threat and he turns to me because I'm the operations undersecretary and he said, Asa, you heard that briefing, what are we doing about that threat? And that's when you want to turn to the person next to you and say, John, you heard that briefing, what are we doing about that threat? But the incredible responsibility and opportunity I had to serve this country during a time of crisis. And I was in uh, Saudi Arabia uh, putting in the first uh, security office after our 9-11 attack. Uh, I've been in Mexico working on fighting the cartels and work with Mexico to dismantle the cartels there that made a difference at that time. And of course, we got to do that again. And so you look at the course corrections that we need as a country. First of all, we got to get this economy back on track. And I know we say, well, our economy is good, but whenever you look at the underlying inflation that leads to higher interest rates that's costing the average South Carolinian $300 more per family just to increase interest rates. Whenever you look at the inflation that costs more for uh, our restaurants, for the supply chain, uh, that hurts uh, the average American. And so it all starts with too much federal spending. They're not, it's out of control. Uh, the Republican Congress right now is doing the right thing, saying we need to slow down and get a framework for reducing federal spending so that we can once again eventually get to a balanced budget. I'm a governor, I know how to balance a budget, and we've got to be able uh, to do that in Washington as well. So you've got to get the economy back on track. Part of that is having an energy policy that works for America, and that is a pro-growth energy policy. Right now, this administration went all green. And when they went all green, our producers of energy said, we're not going to get a return on our investment, so we're stopping to invest in the production. And then you had the Ukraine war break out, and all of a sudden energy supplies went down. Our president takes uh, oil out of the strategic petroleum reserve, which is our reserve capacity, and he puts it out in the market. That's not enough. He goes to Saudi Arabia and says, please, can you produce more? He goes to Venezuela and said, help us out. That's not what the United States of America is about. And they actually talk today about brownouts and blackouts. We need to produce energy in America. We're dependent upon that, and we need to lead, and we need to be independent. I believe that it's important uh, that America also set the example of leadership across the globe. How does America lead? America leads with the strongest economy. China is challenging that. They're saying we want to be the strongest economy. We lead because we have the strongest military, and yet, there's challenges to our supremacy in the military as well. And then we lead also with our national goodness. And you could define it as our national character. And I think that is important to the United States of America, that the globe sees, the world sees, that America engages overseas 
not to expand our empire, but to help freedom-loving people and to protect the freedoms that we have. And so when you look at Ukraine, Russia saw weakness in the United States when our disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. When they saw that, they said this is the time to move. China became more aggressive toward Taiwan. Weakness breeds contempt and breeds aggression. We have to be strong in the United States, and yes, I want us to be number one. We have to build our economy, and that helps us to be strong in terms of our global currency and in terms of our military. And then finally, I just want to say that I'm tired of Washington pushing a social agenda on our schools and our businesses. And I'm speaking of ESG, I'm talking about pushing our schools to uh, for transgenderism. Uh, that starts with Washington and it should not. You know, our local school boards, our communities, our houses of worship should impact our culture and it should not be Washington, D.C. pushing an agenda. And whenever I was uh, governor, uh, we had uh, the White House that was pushing through the Department of Education uh, transgender bathrooms in our public schools. And it went straight to our school superintendents and I told them, you can ignore that guidance because it is not following the law and secondly, it's not representing the culture of our school. And then we had, uh, you know, I've worked, you know, 40 years, I believed in the growth of women's sports after Title IX was adopted. And uh, we've had success there. South Carolina has had success with your women's basketball program uh, that we've all seen. And now you have biological males trying to tear down women's sports. So I signed law in Arkansas that prohibits biological males from competing in women's sports. And I think it's important to push back on Washington and if I'm president, that kind of agenda setting from the left side is certainly going to stop. We're going to let local communities once again run their schools, run their communities, and determine their mores. And so what I'm doing, I believe, is important. And I'd love to have uh, you follow us on asa2024.com. That's our website. And uh, I look forward to being back in South Carolina. And I believe in what we're doing. And I think it makes a difference for America. Thank you very much.